What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and like you guys read in the title, I took a swing trade position today in one stock, we're going to be talking about that here in a couple of minutes, as well as a couple of other stocks and ETFs that I'm actually watching and looking to trade here, heading into the rest of this week in July, and kind of kicking off this month of July on a strong note. So before we do actually get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there is if you enjoy the content, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And I'm forever grateful for everybody out there watching these videos, liking the content, subscribing to the channel. It really does mean the world to me. So let's talk about what's going on right now in the stock market. I'm recording this video, as you guys can see, at a about 3.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm actually trying out a new little video camera setup here. So if you guys like this uh, movable uh, screen recording of my face, I don't know if it makes a difference for you guys, but if you like it, let me know down below in the comments section, and I'll do it more often. So as of now, with about 39 minutes left in the market here, the S&P, and honestly, the entire markets that we look at, the NASDAQ and the Dow, they've been quite boring. Right now, the s and up about $2. Simply seems like we're consolidating on that old resistance as a new support, and that level is at about $29.55 to $29.60. The Dow Jones is up literally 8 points right now. That's nothing for the Dow, up about 0.03%. Nothing crazy at all. The NASDAQ right now is up about 15 points, up 0.2%. So you guys can see, you know, the markets, and if we take a look on the one day, one minute, you guys can see, you know, the markets have just simply been consolidating today and we retested the support again like I said at about 29.55 here for the SPX we held that we bounced and it seems like we're just strictly um, you know consolidating and you guys can see the range we're trading in right now uh, for the S&P is pretty much between 29.50 and about 29.65 and it, again, it's just, it hasn't been really exciting at all today, right? You go to the Dow, you see a lot of the same consolidation. We held yesterday's support at about 26,600. And the NASDAQ, again, guys, on the one day, one minute, um, you know, a lot of the same, right? We hit a low at about 77,70, high right now at about 7,800. And we're at that resistance right now from a couple of um, hours ago. So it's going to be interesting to see how we do end up closing here. But just to couple of technical spots on the overall markets here, starting off with the S&P 500. Again, like I said, you know, we broke out of the previous all-time high resistance on the 30th of April. We've been talking about that over the past couple of videos. It's very obvious and very simple to see now that we broke out of that level. We hit an all-time high, and we're looking to hold those two levels of old resistance as new supports as we've been consolidating here over the past two trades trading days. So for more upwards push in the S&P and, uh, and a potential all-time high, another all-time high, we're going to need to see the successful hold above this level and obviously a pop back up uh, really towards that $3,000 level. And judging on a couple of other time frames here, you know, it's a lot of the same that we've been talking about, right, over the past couple of videos. The S&P, it's still uptrending. It's very, very clear. That gap up pushed us to another all-time high, another higher high. The uptrend uh, continued there, right? And if we go to the smaller time frame charts, five-day, five-minute, you guys can see the reversal that we've been on over the past three, four trading days has been continued today as we pulled back, hit a higher low from the previous, bounced on that 180 SMA. And now, again, for us to potentially hit another all-time high, we're going to need to see this spring past the 2970 level to get back up to those high 2970 levels for a potential all-time high again, right? So going over here to the Dow on the five-day, five-minute, a lot of the same. We broke out of the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA resistance levels, holding that 180 SMA now as a uh, pretty strong support. Yesterday, we got a higher low at about 26, um, 21, or 26, 621, rather. We pulled back today, got a higher low from that level again at about 26, uh, 660. And now it seems like we're pushing 
focusing on a nice little upswing here on the Dow Jones. Everything is still intact for the uptrend here. Going over here to the 20-day one hour, a lot of the same, right? And in this in this case, the Dow needs to break out of 26,800, 26,900, and into the $27,000 level to hit an all-time high and to break out of this resistance and continue the uptrend that it's been on, right? So going over here to the 184 hour chart on the Dow. Just like I said, it needs to get into the $27,000 level. At that point, we could be hitting all time highs um, for the next couple of weeks. Who knows how that play out? All I know is that it is at a strong level of resistance right now. Going over here to the NASDAQ, guys, the NASDAQ, just like the Dow, is actually under the resistance still at about 78.79, which was an all time high from back in April of. Of 2019. We pulled back. We popped up heavily in the month of June, and now it's heading into the month of July as we have been holding the 50 SMA support very nicely. We got the gap up um, over the weekend. We opened up at a higher high, uh, and that really just constitutes the continuation of the uptrend. On the 20-day, you guys can see the bullish cross is still intact. We're still holding that 20, or rather the 50 SMA here on the 20-day one-hour chart, and we're holding it to this minute and it's looking like the Nasdaq wants to continue fighting upwards going back to that five day five minute you guys can see we've been continuously uptrending we're breaking out of moving average resistances right now and we have about 40 points to get back to that resistance and to see if we're going to get back to that 7900 level or get to it I don't know if we actually have ever been to that $7,900 level yep we've never been there let's see if we can find Finally get there and hit an all-time high for the Nasdaq. So that is the overall market update for today's video. Let me know down below what do you guys think about the markets right now. We consolidated today. Are we going to gap upwards tomorrow? Are we going to sell off? How do you guys think things are going to play out? I would love to know what you guys have to think as always. Now getting on to what I personally did today. I didn't do any day trading today, guys, to be completely honest. Again, the markets were flat. I wasn't finding many opportunities out there, but I did end up taking a swing position in a stock that I've actually been talking about here a lot over the past week to two weeks. And that stock, as you guys can see, is INTC, also known as Intel Corporation. And Intel Corporation, to get really brief about it, to be really concise about it, I like it simply because it's been riding up this 180 SMA support here on the 20-day, one-hour chart. We pulled back. We retested it yesterday and into today. We've been holding that level very nicely and although we didn't get the full-on pop here I took a position uh, a little bit short here uh, a little bit short in terms of timing because I'm scaling into this position, right? So if it does end up gapping down and breaking the 180 SMA where I will cut my losses, I'm not going to lose as much money. So in this case, I feel comfortable jumping the gun a little bit before it fully pops because, again, I'm in with a smaller percentage of money. So as of now, guys, I'm in at about 40, I think I dipped into the 47s a little bit, about $47.82 is where I got in to INTC here. We've been riding up, and I'm up a really small amount now. I'm not obviously planning on taking my profits. I'm actually looking to swing trade this for two, three days, and that's it, right? I'm just holding this one overnight, and I plan on adding more money if everything goes according to plan. If we go back to this 20-day, one-hour chart, I plan on adding more money as we break, if we break past 48.50, guys. Take a look at this level of resistance from a couple of days ago. So if we actually reach that level, what that's going to tell me is that the confirmation or rather the bounce on that 180 SMA is fully confirmed. And that's going to make me very comfortable in adding more money, right? We pop up tomorrow. Let's say it's trending up. I might add more money. And of course, I'll keep you guys updated on that. But the, 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 um, the brief update really is that we're on a pullback right here from 49.50 down to where we are. That's about a 3-4% pullback and upwards of $50 where there is a strong resistance where I plan on selling. You know, I can get roughly a 4% profit and I'm really, really liking that here on 
Intel. So that is what I'm doing right now. I'm simply just trading Intel. I'll let you guys know how that goes in tomorrow's update video. And if you're in the group chat, the Discord chat, which is linked down below 100% free, I'll keep you guys updated in there as well. So that's it for the trading portion. I have a couple of stocks here that I do want to talk about very quickly. We're seeing Apple. And if you guys uh, look down here, the tech stocks have actually been doing extraordinary well recently. Apple is back into the $200 level. So let's take a look at Apple's technicals very quickly. AAPL, you guys can see we've been talking about this level of 200 being a resistance. We broke out of that level, making it a new support, as you guys can clearly see. Since then, we've been riding that 50 SMA support very nicely. We see the bullish cross of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. And we actually got the pullback today. If we go on the 10-day, 30-minute, we got the pullback today from 205. We retested that old resistance as a new support. We retested it, and we bounced from there. We pulled back midday. We're holding a higher low, and it's looking like we want to swing on or close on a nice little swing up here on Apple. So this is looking very bullish, in my opinion, since we retested that level and confirmed it. So now the next resistance I'm seeing on Apple is going to be, I think, around $208. This is a brief resistance before we get up to, let's say, $210. So from where we are now up to $208, that offers about, I would say, a 3-4% margin. And let's say we get up to 210, and I don't know why this keeps um, deleting on me. I think 210, if we were to get there, that would be actually closer to a 4% uh, profit. And then two, uh, 208, that would be closer to a 25 to 3%. But Apple, nonetheless, is looking very good right now. Obviously, Intel, I'm currently in it. I'm obviously looking to add more into it. This is one on the top of my watch list. Tesla has actually been doing quite well since it's broken out of that 180 SMA resistance. And if we're actually looking on the 20 day one hour chart for Tesla, we're actually at a bit of a dip right now. But the thing is, guys, that's kind of worrying me is Tesla might be plateauing here at about 235. We hit the top, we pulled back. And although we hit and held that 180 SMA, which was a very good sign for the continuation of the uptrend, what I'm not like is that we got hit again at that 230 level of resistance, 234, and we weren't able to break out of it. So that's kind of alarming in my opinion, but the fact that we're still holding the 180 SMA kind of leads me to believe there's still hope for Tesla to fill the gap back up to 235, and that's honestly what I'm looking for here. So if it does fill the gap, that could be about 4%, but until it breaks out of 235, I'm not looking to go long on it quite yet, but let's say it does, that would be a huge bullish move from 235, uh, you know, upwards to the next resistance, which at that point, I don't even know what that level would be. Maybe 250 or maybe probably, uh, you know, I'd say maybe 240, 250. If we do break 235, those are levels that we could potentially be getting to. So AMD is another one that I'm currently looking at, and I've been looking at this one um, across the day today, and I'm liking it because we're noticing the bullish reversal here on AMD. We hit highs of 34, lower high at 31. At this point, the trend was obviously pointing down, right? You guys can clearly see it. We actually hit another lower high here under the 180 SMA at about $30.35. And since we actually broke out of those levels of moving average resistances, we broke out of this uh, resistance of the top of the trend line that I just drew out, you know, we've been reversing, right? Instead of lower highs, we've been making higher lows. We hit a higher high yesterday at about $32. We pulled back today, $30.90, $31-ish. We're holding a higher low right Right now on top of the 50 SMA and this can be one of those plays that completely pops up and continues the uptrend we may be hitting another higher high and if that ends up playing out you know we can end up getting a four or five upwards to a six percent profit if we
we play it out well. So AMD, I'm really liking that one. Um, in terms of inverse ETFs, honestly, guys, I haven't been watching those too closely today, but I do know that gold went parabolic today. We saw the dip back into $1,300 level for gold. We It was very brief, honestly. We went from $1,413 down to about $1,385 for a couple of days here, and now we're finally popping back up. We're breaking out of the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA levels of resistance, but one thing to keep an eye on now, look at this trend line I just drew. You know, we're slowly approaching. We're honestly already at this level of resistance based on the trend line. We're a bit overbought, so this could be a time where maybe gold starts to sell off a bit, maybe, but if it breaks out, that's going to be very bullish, and JNUG, you know, it's going to continue to benefit as it's extremely benefited so much today, guys. Take a look at this. 15% uh, move today. This is absolutely crazy. JNUG is killing it, but same like gold, guys. We're still under that little... Um, you know, uh, uh, trend line resistance here. So until we break out of that, we're going to be pretty careful. I'm going to be pretty careful in terms of these. So I'm going to wrap up the video here today, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button. Let me stretch this out. I'm not used to this yet. It's pretty cool. But again, if you enjoyed it, guys, hit that like button hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I really appreciate every single one of you guys watching, hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel. It means the world to me. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Let me know how you guys did. I hope you all have a great 4th of July the rest of this week. Peace out.